Welcome to Nationwide Today. I'm Elizabeth Omori and we are beaming live from Abuja. The last one year has been a period of reformation in the Nigerian Senate, a change that the actors themselves believe has redefined the Nigerian representative democracy by virtue of the nature of legislative and economic relationship. Ignatius Nkwo highlights the role of the Senate in the fifth year of the Buhari administration. Eleven days after the swearing-in of President Muhammadu Buhari, the elected members of the National Assembly were inaugurated. With, with consultations and calculations were made, goals were weighed and strategic decisions taken at the inception of the Ninth Senate. And the resolve was to move Nigeria forward through a mutual and working relationship among institutions of government, but with observance of separation of powers as provided in the Constitution. The first point of convergence with the executive was the screening of ministerial nominees. 43 of them were forwarded by President Muhammadu Buhari 14 days after the National Assembly inauguration, and all of them were confirmed after a painstaking screening. And that was the springboard that enabled the timely takeoff of the presidential cabinet, with more than 30 other appointments confirmed afterwards. The Senate continued with its patriotic disposition when it gave accelerated passage to the 2020 budget less than three months after it was presented by President Muhammad Buhari, thereby reverting Nigeria's budget to January-December cycle. For this budget, for us to be able to tell Nigerians that we have excelled, oversight function is very, very, very important. I believe that this bill is tailored to meet the critical needs of the country at this point of our democratic evolution. We have given them the budget by passing it. We have given them the finance bills. We have given them the public procurement amendment bill. The role of the National Assembly in the sustenance of Nigeria's democracy through lawmaking was clearly understood by the legislators. Vivid and strategic, the Senate appeared to be firing on all cylinders to improve Nigeria's economy. Passage of bills that will shore up Nigeria's revenue was top on its agenda. The Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Act Amendment Bill, three Public Procurement Act Amendment Bills, and Finance Bill 2019 were passed and loan requests approved. Consultations as one of the characteristics of representative democracy in the last one year has been a major feature of the Ninth Senate. Series of meetings have been held involving the executive and civil society organizations, some to resolve industrial disputes between unions and government, to review government policies and bills, and lately on the COVID-19 pandemic. In appreciation, President Muhammadu Buhari, in his communication to the National Assembly on Thursday, 29th of May, 2020, commended the legislators for their commitment. Mr. President is occupying an office, and that office is for all Nigerians, irrespective of whether they are APC, they are PDP. In the past, the machinery of governance has been hampered by delay in the passage of annual budgets and confirmation of executive appointees, a story the Ninth Senate is rewriting. Ignatius Nkwo. NTN News. In our true leadership, for many decades, Africa and indeed Nigeria have been confronted with leadership challenges, while many believe that African leaders lack the right values to drive development. Others are the view that the followers are also not playing their expected roles. It is against this background that the Nigeria Prize for Leadership organized the first national leadership dialogue with the theme, Rethinking Leadership, Vision, Creativity and Capacity of a Transformer. Africa, a continent blessed with abundant resources, yet bedeviled by snail pace development, most of which are a result of leadership. The of this webinar x-ray the pre-colonial 
and post-colonial era, all of which have a mix of the military and democratic rule. To address the leadership crisis in the country, experts say there is the need to come up with policies that will engender national cohesion and integration as well as build system that foster peace, justice and equity. Everybody thinks that to make the country better, you have to point at the sitting president, you have to point at the sitting governor, you have to point at the sitting chairman of the local government, and of course, national levels. Yes, politics has a role to play. Discussions at this event are of the view that there must be a clear definition of leadership responsibility and carry everyone along Nabuja, Dumi, Dia, NT News. The five years administration of President Muhammad Buhari has reestablished Niger's position and influence in the ECOWAS and global arena, with successes recorded in security, economy, and world politics, as well as stirring affairs of many international organizations by Nigerians. Hamin Jabani takes a look at some of the diplomatic and international breakthroughs in Nigeria's experiences. The need for Nigeria to be more involved in world affairs and improve its international relations in this era of globalization and the accompanying system of interdependence saw so President Muhammad Buhari believing that strengthening international relationships and delivering effective domestic policies will enable Nigeria to set up and play an increasingly vital role in maintaining peace and stability in Africa. Regarding its rightful place in the international community, who saw the country getting the position of Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, President of the UN General Assembly, President of the International Criminal Court, Secretary General of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, among other positions. <laughs> Nigeria under President Muhammadu Buhari in 2016 signed agreement on the identification and repatriation of illicit funds with the United Arab Emirates engage other countries to ensure the repatriation of Nigeria's stolen assets. For cooperation we have received in our effort to recover stolen funds. Our two governments have put the machinery in place for their respective attorney generals to collaborate in ensuring the return to Nigeria of over 500 million United States dollars of looted funds siphoned away in banks around the world. Nigeria was one of those countries that signed on to the Global Forum on Asset Recovery Principle. And one of those principles is the inclusion of civil society in asset recovery negotiation process. That for me is something that is remarkable. And we also need to commend the President. And because of the engagement with civil society, it has really helped to convince the international community, particularly with the restitution of the Abasha theory. The Buhari administration has mobilized international support for war against Boko Haram, forging strong partnership with United States, the United Kingdom, France and Germany, ECOWAS, the AU, the UN, which made the country to finally agree to sell weapons to Nigeria, seeing the number of terrorist-related deaths in the country dropping by more than 80% since 2016 by Global Tourist Index Report of 2019, and freeing more than 16,000 hostages from captivity. Nigeria is a valued partner and a good friend. I look forward to working closely with you to deepen our cooperation and forge an even closer partnership the United States is committed to working alongside Nigeria as we seek a future of strength, prosperity, and peace. I especially want to thank President Buhari for Nigeria's partnership and leadership in the fight against terrorism. He's been a real leader. They're so willing to really uh, engage with us. And they, he kept on making the point that they're not looking for 
political gain. They're not looking to uh, dominate uh, any country economically, but it is just that uh, a sense of uh, a solidarity. Nigeria joined the Open Government Partnership, participated in the London Anti-Corruption Summit and Commonwealth Conference on Tackling Corruption, but in 2016. The designation of President Muhammadu Buhari as the African Union anti-corruption champion and West Africa's COVID-19 champion shows great respect Nigeria is getting from the countries around the world. And I think that is a demonstration of the integrity that has been brought into office by, uh, by the President and his administration and the stature, the new stature, the recognition of the importance of Nigeria, not only in Africa but globally in terms of what the capacity that we have to do good in terms of global governance. The leader today that we have in Nigeria is one the world has been waiting for. And because he has stepped forward to lead our country, Nigeria is seen in a new and a different, very positive light by the global community. Experts say Nigeria's diplomatic and international relations has improved greatly in the last five years of Buhari's administration, and the last three years will cement that for the future. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Still on sectorial development, the federal government has successfully moved Nigeria from a food importing nation to a country that is not only food secured, but also at par with world largest producers of agricultural produce. In this report, agriculture correspondent Musa Babalu takes a look at what led to this development. Trucks of fertilizer diverted or stolen, termites eating up tractors. Wind sweeping away heavy duty farming equipment. These were some of the tales that greeted the ears of farmers and people whenever government officials want to cover up their shoddy deals. The gullible people had no option, they resigned to faith. These agriculturalists say contributed largely to the decline in yield output of farmers. Missing gap in production, missing gap in agricultural activities that affect the life of this country that are faithful security. This has become tale of the past following steps put in place by the Buhari administration that put an end to corruption in input value chain. The agreement signed between Nigeria and Morocco on the supply of phosphate, a major ingredient in making fertilizer, was the first step taken to eradicate corruption in the sector. 22 blending plants with combined installation capacity of more than 2.5 million metric tons were resuscitated. Because of the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative has helped to stimulate investment in blending, blending plants, blending factories. So we have more blending plants today. And these blending plants today together have a combined capacity of about 4 million tons. To further make it easy for farmers, the price of 50 kilograms of fertilizer was brought down to 5,500 naira. Our farmers have made great strides in local production of rice, maize, cassava, poultry, fertilizer, fisheries, and system. Rice production shoots up from 3.7 million metric tons to more than 18 million metric tons. Nigeria is also leading other African countries in maize, sorghum, granite, millet, yam, cassava, among other produce. The government has also pushed for the revival of the moribund textile industries with the injection of 100 billion naira. The sector has the capacity to transform Nigeria's rural economy and revive the textile and garment industries by creating over 2 million jobs improve internal revenue across three tiers of government, reduce over $4 billion import bill incurred annually on textiles and apparel, safeguard and end foreign exchange, mm -hmm. and ultimately accelerate industrial development. In order to consolidate the success achieved in agriculture, the government is recruiting more extension workers while strategy to establish agro-processing zones is underway. We are going to organize all our research institutions to make meaningful research to develop products and allow them to sell. 
to, to pattern their, their, their production. The government is also rolling out a program that will boost the country's dairy and milk production and cut down importation. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. For more reports on Nationwide, let's join Adeola in Lagos. Hello, Adeola. Hello, Lizzie. The Nigerian Navy has once again presented palliatives to Nigerians at the grassroots in Ota Ogun State. Apolori Ogbara reports that the gesture is part of activities to commemorate the 64th anniversary of the Nigerian Navy. The mission to alter by the Naval Training Command was to deliver food and other essential products to residents who may be affected by the COVID-19 partial lockdown. 250 households, made up of mostly the vulnerable, benefited from the gesture. The Olota of Ota, who was represented, appreciated the Nigerian Navy for identifying with the community. What they have done cannot be overemphasized. You will see that with the present situation we find ourselves in the world uh, via this uh, issue of the pandemic, the less privileged, they are seriously sovereign. So for the Nigerian Navy to now come to the aid of our people at this point in time, it's highly appreciative. So we are glad and we are happy that we have them as a member of our community. Acting Flag Officer Commanding, Naval Training Command, Rear Admiral Idowu Yusuf said the Navy is empathetic about the plight of the needy at this critical period. And just to also support the communities. And that's why the Chief of Naval Staff has sent us here with these palliatives. We have just 250 for 250 families just to assist them. The Navy plans to extend same largesse to other communities. In Lagos, Abolore Obara, NT News. As community transmission of COVID-19 continues to rise, measures imposed by the federal and state governments to stem the spread of the virus may not achieve desirable results, considering the non-adherence to the social distancing guideline at most markets in Lagos State. Nusa Usula, who visited some markets to evaluate the level of compliance, completes the story. Since the gradual easing of lockdown began in Lagos, residents have been trooping out en masse for their normal businesses so as to meet up with the 3 p.m. deadline when most business transactions are expected to be concluded. In the midst of the rush by residents, they failed to comply with the social distancing rule, especially in marketplaces. Visits to some major markets in the states observed total lack of adherence to social distancing among customers and traders. Kende Musedik, the babaloja of Elemoro Market in Bogije Ibejuleki area of Lagos State, who admitted the failure of traders and customers to maintain social distancing, said they are aware that the virus is real and deadly and that they are doing all they can to protect themselves by insisting on the usage of face masks and hand sanitizers at the market. I advise my people in this market that they should try to use uh, this uh, mask to cover their mouth and nose so to avoid uh, carrying the uh, coronavirus. To our people is to play safe. Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, advised residents to comply with government's directive on COVID-19. As you know, the COVID-19 is expanding with active community transmission. We do have COVID positive people who develop moderate to severe or even critical disease. The commissioner gave an assurance that the government will vigorously pursue its agenda to ensure good health and well-being of Lagos residents. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NCA News. Nationwide will continue in Abuja after this break. Stay on. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes 
to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus, but we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Now, believe this corotin. Can you feel touch black man? If you like, gather the whole Niger, come together, make a cough. <laughs> Nothing. Which one you want? Give me V and D. Uh -huh. I mean, get small pieces. How much you want to give her? Give me 200. <coughs> Take your change now. Will you? you know what your change is? My people, this coronavirus, na serious matter, me will not wash your hands regularly. Come use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. If you no see water, wash your hand, oh, make you sit down for house. You see this virus, so oh? it no get leg. Na we the waka kuru kere. No walk around, make the virus for die. No forget, say, the betterment of our people. Now for your handy day. This message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation. <laughs> Stay with us. At about five minutes before midnight on the 30th of May, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control announced 553 new cases of COVID-19 in the country, bringing a total number to 9,855. This is the highest number of COVID-19 cases recorded in a day since the outbreak in Nigeria. Of the 553 new cases, Lagos has 378, FCT 52, Delta 23, Edo 22, Rivers 14, Ogun 13, Kaduna 12, Kano 9, Borono 7, Katsina 6, Wijigawa and Oyo recording 5 new cases each. Yobe and Plato have 3 new cases each, while Ashun has 1 new case. Legacy leads the COVID-19 chart with 4,755 cases, followed by Kano with 951 cases and the FCT with 616. A total of 2,856 COVID-19 patients have recovered and discharged with 273 deaths recorded. For the federal government to thrive in its fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, efforts must be channeled towards assisting all states of the Federation in combating the disease. This is the position of the cross River State Government during an update on COVID-19. Justina Aitim reports. Despite the rising case of COVID-19 in the country, Cross River State remains the only state yet to report any confirmed case of the disease. However, 
The COVID-19 free status of the state has generated controversy as the state commissioner for health says there is conspiracy and pressure from different quarters that the state is concealing cases of COVID-19. As a state at this point, we want to clearly say we fought a good fight. We have run our race. Dr. Edu says the hype given to coronavirus by relevant authorities is undermining the management of other diseases, thereby jeopardizing the health of several Nigerians who are now afraid to visit health facilities. I'm sure we were like the very first state in Nigeria that distributed 5,300 PPEs in January to both the teaching hospital, general hospitals across the state, primary health care centers, of course, the military, paramilitary, private hospitals. The commissioner believes that if the federal government gives more assistance to the states, there will be the ability to meet its requirements in the area of testing, surveillance, and more. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. And Mohammed Ibrahim in Medugri has the next set of reports for us. Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you and welcome to Medugri. Borno State Government is poised to provide security to 28 agrarian communities on the shores of the Lake Chad to enable them to cultivate their farms this rainy season. Governor Babangana Umara announced this while briefing newsmen shortly after inspecting trenches being excavated by the state government to safeguard farmers within the area to enable them to access their farmlands. Mohamed Goni reports. Excavation of trenches to cover 28 agrarian communities is part of the security measures taken to protect farmers in their homes and on their farmlands. Governor Babagana Umara said government intends to ensure military presence outside the excavated trenches so that the 28 communities will be resettled to access their farmlands. As soon as uh, the total numbers is known to us, we shall identify their needs so that we can provide them with some agricultural input. But most importantly, how can we support them with building materials so that they can rehabilitate their homes by themselves? The excavation work started from Alo down to Molay, close to the federal government silos along the Mboa Highway. The governor had earlier interacted with Bali, Jimmy, Koreri, Gemberi, Yauri, Bali Shuari, Hassanari, and Mamanti communities where he encouraged them to remain in their communities as the government has taken all necessary security measures. As part of the visit, Professor Bagana Umara addressed officers and men of the 251 Tax Force Brigade, where he announced government's donation of 600 bags of rice, 600 cartons each of spaghetti, macaroni, noodles, and gallons of cooking oil, among others. The Commander 251 Tax Force Brigade was full of gratitude for the gesture and reassured commitment to ensuring that farmers return to their farmland by providing the much-needed security for them. In Maiduguri, Mamut Goni, NTA News. As part of activities commemorating the 47th anniversary of the National Youth Service Corps, the scheme in Bono State distributed palliatives to internally displaced persons, taking refuge at the NYC orientation camp in Maiduguri, housing the displaced persons. Medical outreach was also conducted at the IDP's camp to support health of the victims of the insurgency and COVID-19 prevention. Deborah John Justin reports. During the heat of the Boko Haram insurgency, the National Youth Service Corps gave out its orientation camp to provide solace and shelter for thousands of displaced communities across the state. This followed the shifting of NYC camp orientation exercise for Borno to other states due to security concerns. Clocking 47 years in existence, the scheme didn't beat fit to distribute palliatives as well as conduct medical outreach to IDPs taking refuge in the NYC IDPs camp. The beneficiaries expressed appreciation to NYC Borno State for giving them some sense of belonging. Last time, I was in the city of 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 the Execution of community development services as well as participation in various governmental activities by the National Youth Service Scheme are all part of its mandate to national development. In order for us to reach as many households as possible, that's why we choose to meet them at the IDP camps. Because this is basically their home now. 
Success is recorded by the scheme are tremendous and we keep on counting. The current management of the NYC are doing a lot to reposition the scheme to align with the demands of the current times. The NYC scheme pledged its continuous support to the Borno State Government in its quest to manage and cop the spread of COVID-19. In Maiduguri, Jadwajon Jesini, NTA. That is all from Maiduguri. Nationwide continues in Abuja. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Nigeria and other 15 past African leaders have continued to identify with the president of the African Development Bank, Akiomi Adesino. This is coming as 15 former African leaders and past presidents of the bank passed a vote of confidence on Dr. Akiomi Adesino following allegation of misconduct. Musa Babali has details. Nigeria over the years has been a major shareholder in the African Development Bank since its establishment in September 10, 1964. The country is controlling 9.1% of the total share of the bank, followed by U.S., Egypt, Japan, South Africa, among other shareholders. The bank has successfully elected eight presidents, and Akumumi Adeshina is the first Nigerian to hold that position. He enjoyed the support of President Muhammad Buhari and other African leaders, who unanimously endorsed him in May 2015. We're going to invest $24 billion dollars of our own money into agriculture over the next um, 10 years so that Africa can be totally full self-sufficient. And secondly, Africa can participate in global value chains. As his first tenure ended, and he was endorsed by an African leader for a second time in office, there comes an allegation of what was described as whistleblowing against the Akiomi Adeshina. On 15th May this year, the governing board of the bank exonerated the AFDB's president from all the allegations leveled against him and declared him free to contest his second term in office. Not satisfied with that, the United States is now calling for independent probe with an agenda of pushing the first AFDB Nigerian-born president out of office. Other shareholders of the bank, including past African leaders, are emphasizing that based on the principles governing the bank, no nation has the power to remove the president or any director of the bank. President Mahmoud Buhari, in a letter through the Minister of Finance, calls for the respect of the laws and guidelines of the bank. The president recalls the success story and achievements of Akiwumi Adeshina, which includes securing a general capital increase of $115 billion, the largest in the history of the bank. The election of Akiwumi Adeshina as the AFDB president earlier scheduled for May 2018 this month was shifted to August 27th and 28th due to COVID-19. Adeshina is the sole candidate contesting for the position. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. The need for all hands to be on deck is important for African Development Bank, chaired by Dr. Adeshino Akiomi, to stay at its enviable height. This is the message of some African leaders in a release jointly signed by 15 former African presidents, including Olusegun Obasanjo of Nigeria, Boniyayi, Republic of Bene, Halimeria, the Sunli, Ethiopia, and John Kufor of Ghana, to show their solidarity for Dr. Adeshino who had been accused of violating the bank's code of ethics by the so-called whistleblower. The leaders said any form of distraction should be avoided for the bank at this time when Africa is battling COVID-19. Dr. Adeshino, who had been cleared of 16 allegations leveled against him, has already announced $10 billion crisis response facility to support Africa, African countries, launched $3 billion to fight COVID-19 and provided funds worth $3 billion to support women in Africa. The leaders, however, called for respect for rule of law that established government system of the organization, which has since been in 1964, for it not to lose its hard-earned reputation. Time now to join Mina in our Enugu studio for more reports. Hello, Mina. Hello, Elizabeth. Good evening and welcome to Enugu. A number of state governor, Willie Obiano, has urged federal government to declare a state of emergency on erosion sites in the state. The governor made this known when he expected a 35 meet a deep erosion control site at Nkisiaroli and Obelago in Onisha. Ndemkalo has details. 
The erosion site is one of the 962 active erosion sites in Anambra State. The site is said to have affected more than 40 houses in the area. Governor Ubiano noted that it will cost more than 5 billion naira to control the site, hence the need for assistance of the federal government. He said that in the next day, the drainage will be properly channeled. I've seen it myself. It's, uh, a lot of houses have caved in. Yes. One of my best contractors, IDC, she assured me that in less than 20 days, you will get... If the water is diverted here in the interim, all those other buildings will be saved. Yes. Uh, we will start the filling during the uh, next dry season. Commissioner for Works, Marcel Ifejo 4, stated that the residents of the area are cooperative, which is making the work to move fast, while contractor handling the project promised to deliver as expected. People of the area are optimistic that the project will be completed and delivered as promised from Onicha, Ndemkalo, NTN News. The construction of the 13-kilometer Abakba Nike MNL Link Road in Enugu East Territorial Zone by the current administration in the state has been described by the people as evidence of government committed to rural development, inaugurating the road which connects Nika Lake with the Adoration Ministries Prayer Center and the Akanibiam International Airport MNA Enugu. Governor Ifai Uguayi said the bypass was conceived to ease the traffic conjunctions within the metropolis. Susan Eze has details. The 13-kilometer road beginning from Nike Lake Junction, traversing Harmony Estate, Amoji Nike, Adoration Pilgrimage Center, Oriemene, is a virgin road constructed through the forest of Umuchibu community, Enugu East Local Government. The road provides easy alternative to the industrial satellite town of MNA, especially to the Akanibiam International Airport and the popular Adoration Prayer Ground from the ever-busy Nike Lake Road. The project, according to the State Commissioner for Works, was a taste of engineering expertise for which his ministry is glad to have completed. For the Spiritual Director Adoration Pilgrimage Center, Reverend Father E.G. Kembaka, the new road is nothing short of a miracle. There was no road of any kind here before now. In fact, this road is a miracle. I dreamt of it, I envisioned it, the governor achieved it. Conceived to ease traffic within Enugu East Zone, open up development at the Harmony Estate, MNA, and its environs. The road, according to Governor Ugwani, exemplifies government's procurement policy of initiating and completing projects. While these projects help to inflate the local economy through project spending for procurement of goods and services, it opens a new economic corridor through stimulation of commerce and creation of employment and job opportunities to our teaming youths going forward. First phase of the project from the airport roundabout to Ekeobinago MNA has also been completed and inaugurated. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And that's a bit from Enugu Nationwide continues in Abuja with Elizabeth after this commercial break. The number of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is increasing daily with many more tests ongoing. The battle of testing, isolating, treating and attending to the affected persons rests heavily on the shoulders of our health workers, constantly putting their lives on the line and at risk to contain this virus, save and protect the lives of millions of Nigerians. To these health workers, we at the Nigerian Television Authority NTA, on behalf of millions of Nigerians, say a big thank you for all that you have done and are doing to the security agencies enforcing the lockdown and every other frontliner. We say thank you for putting your lives on the line to save ours. There is no amount of words that can quantify our gratitude. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. 
immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19. A corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number. 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. 25th February 2020, Nigeria. It is real. It is a nightmare. It is killing people all over the world. It is COVID-19. Compliance with the various states in Nigeria, the current measures will flatten the curves. Shutting down is not an act of wickedness, but an act to save lives. Stay home, stay safe. Observe social distance. Always put on a face mask while leaving your house. Make sure you are on a tricycle alone. Cars and buses cannot carry more than half their passengers. Always remember to wash your hands. Together, we will defeat COVID-19. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, Nigeria Film Corporation, powering possibilities. Nigerians, let us take responsibility. Stay healthy, stay safe, and curb the spread of the virus. Take responsibility. The coronavirus spreads from one person to another. Let us avoid crowd gathering of any kind for any reason. Take responsibility. Avoid traveling from one state to another during these lockdown restrictions. Obey all the rules that are put in place. Take responsibility. Stop spreading fake news and unverified reports about the coronavirus. There is no known cure for COVID-19. Take responsibility. Observe all the measures that can help stop the spread of the virus. Together, we can do this, but only if we take responsibility. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Glad to know you're still there. An expert of call is Joss, and Zinret will be our guide. Nice to see you, Zinret. And thanks for joining us in Joss. The Plata State Police Command has read the riot act to kidnappers and other criminal elements terrorizing residents of Plata State, warning that there is no hiding place for criminals in the state. The Commissioner of Police, Mr. Edward Ebuka, disclosed this while parading some suspects responsible for murdering late Dr. Nandi Drankat of the University of Joss and other robbery suspects apprehended across the state. A camera in Kaneng Laduja has details. Mr. Ebuka revealed that, in synergy with the DSS, two members of the gang of kidnappers who murdered the late Unijos lecturer, Dr. Drenkat, and kidnapped his daughter, were captured and they confessed to their crimes. In what I believe will be a case study in synergy between security agencies, the Department of State Security in Plateau State, we are able to track down two other members of this notorious gang of kidnappers. Two firearms were recovered, an AK-47 rifle with two rounds of ammunition, and a Beretta pistol with seven rounds of ammunition. Interestingly, this Beretta pistol was stolen from late Sergeant Jonathan Dan Lamy. One John Nanzing Ladong of Gero area in just south local government area was also paraded for impersonating a captain of the Nigerian army and was caught with different uniforms and dangerous weapons. The Commissioner of Police also confirmed an attack in Miyaguda claimed the lives of all people. A message to the hoodlums in, on the plateau is the Tea Party is over. They have no choice but to relocate 
or change their ways. The commissioner appealed to residents to always provide useful and timely information, as well as be vigilant, as he added that all directives regarding curfew and lockdowns should be adhered to by all. In Joss, Ekemeren Kaneng Laduja, NTA News. Sukha has come the way of some women and youth groups in Plata State by way of palliatives to cushion the effect of COVID-19 lockdown. Minister of Women Affairs Dame Pauline Tallinn in a message urged leaders of the beneficiary groups to ensure equitable distribution among the targeted groups. Ali Sabatukai Andrew reports. Women being the most vulnerable in the society have continued to receive palliatives from the Minister of Women Affairs Dame Pauline Tallinn. This time around, the donation is from the NASCO group of companies reaching out with bags of rice, spaghettis, cartons of Maggi cubes and salt to widow and youth groups to alleviate the hardship faced in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. They're giving her every assurance that just like what we know that is in her heart, that these gifts will go down to those who really need it. really appreciate for the face mask and for her... Efforts. We really appreciate it. The Minister of Women Affairs, then Paul Tallinn, represented, said her ministry will not relent in ensuring that women, especially the vulnerable, are supported, as well as youths for a vibrant society. Wherever she can secure assistance to help the Nigerian woman, to rescue the Nigerian child, to educate the girl child, and ensure that they have a good welfare, she does it. The Minister assured women for more support, not only in the face of COVID-19, but also in tackling poverty among women and initiatives to improve girl-child education and welfare. In Joss, Alisa Batukai Andrew, NTA News. And that's it from Joss. Elizabeth, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Sinret. Now to security, citizens and community leaders in Akwaibam State are re-strategizing with the police to expose and crack down criminally minded persons in their communities. At a security gathering in Ethem Airport local government, the people were emphatic that there would be nothing hidden. And it's clear and that is the fact that no longer will any individual commit crime and run to any part of Etimepo, Ika, Abak, Ukanafon and Uruganam local government areas for protection. This assurance came having known that the tax of community policing has been formally handed over to them through the Etimepo local government and area command community policing advisory committee. Still, you must expect immediately these committees start functioning is immediate reduction in crime, particularly at the grassroots and various neighborhoods all over Etimeko. Members of these committees are drawn from different sectors. We have representatives of the political class, the traditional institutions, the youth, women groups, the farmers, retired and serving police officers and other security agencies. Now all of them are coming together to partner with the Nigeria police to ensure that peace and security are sustained. And this partnership is basically defined by accountability and respect for human rights. From Etimepo local government area, Clement Barakui, NTA News. Burma State Governor Professor Babagana Omaru Zulum has commiserated with Gajingana community in Magumiri council area of the state following a terror attack that claimed 17 lives while 23 others sustained various degrees of injuries. Mohamed Goni reports. About 48 kilometers away from Maiduguri, the state capital, Gajigana, a community in Magumiri local government area, came under terror attack 12 days ago where the insurgents reportedly used rocket propelled grenade to attack the security operative base there. Some touch houses caught fire in the encounter, resulting in the death of 17 persons, with 23 others sustaining injuries. Professor Obagana Obara sympathized with them and prayed Allah to grant the departed souls eternal rest and the family the fortitude to bear the loss, as well as to abide future occurrence. The governor assured support to those affected to enable them to rebuild their homes and support for the civilian JTF and vigilante, as well as presented 1.7 million naira to support the families of the deceased, with each to receive 100,000 naira. Member representing the area at the Federal House of Representatives, Usman Zanna, appreciated the governor for the visit, which he said was a demonstration of his concern to the security and welfare of the citizens. In Maiduguri, Amut Goni, NTNF. 
way for residents of Anguhan community in Great West local government area to return home after the series of attacks on the community by suspected bandits, as Governor Summer Autumn has pledged to rehabilitate, to rehabilitate the community. Charles Abba reports. Anguhan community has continuously come under attacks by suspected headers and unknown gunmen, resulting in loss of lives, destruction of property, and displacement of people. The governor, who attended a burial of the area, lamented the level of devastation and the bad condition of the access road, including the shattered state of the only primary school in the community. He expressed his commitment to beef up security in the area and attend to the road and school to enable the people to return to their ancestral home. The only thing God has given us is family. And so our people must have. And in the next few days, I'm going to give attention to this place and I believe that the security agencies will support me in that our people are no longer Some of the community leaders who appreciated the governor's gesture were optimistic that economic and social activities would bounce back at the time the projects have been executed. Charles Abba, NTA News. Next is Sports Update with Amanze Marcus.